hello everyone welcome back to my channel anytime medicine and today we are going to learn about is dca cycle so before we start subscribe to my channel so you cannot miss my future video so without further ado let's get started so dca cycle means tricarboxylic acid cycles and it has two other names which is Krebs cycle and citric acid cycle because it will use citrate in these processes so TCA cycle is a part of metabolic pathway in which it will convert acetyl coenzyme A into carbon dioxide. In these processes, it will produce energy from all the reactions that occur in TCA cycle. So TCA cycle's all reaction occurs in mitochondria and it will produce NAD and FADH2 which is used in electron transport chain which will make energy in the form of ATP. It will also produce GTP and carbon dioxide in these processes. So here is the figure of citric acid cycle in which acetyl coenzyme A will enter into the cycle and end product of this cycle is oxaloacetate. In this video we are going to talk about each and every step of this cycle. So the first step is cytosynthesis which is 6 carbon structure which is made of oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme A. Oxaloacetate is a 4 carbon structure and acetyl coenzyme A is a 2 carbon structure and it is inhibited by ATP as you can see in the picture that oxaloacetate and acetyl coenzyme A will make this citrate with the enzyme citrate synthase and it will inhibit it by ATP, NADH and succinyl coenzyme A. You have to remember that it will inhibit the phosphofructokinase 1 enzyme which is responsible for the glycolysis and it will activate the acetyl coenzyme A carboxylase enzyme which is responsible for fatty acid synthesis. So now we'll see what happens in fasting state and how ketone bodies are generated. So first oxaloacetate is used for gluconeogenesis as you all know. Pyruvate will convert into oxaloacetate and that oxaloacetate will go into the gluconeogenesis. Pyruvate will also convert into the acetyl coenzyme A with the help of pyruvate dehydrogenase. Acetyl coenzyme A will also comes from fatty acid acetyl coenzyme A and which will comes from adipose tissue. And because of that acetyl coenzyme A's level gets high. As I have told you before that oxaloacetate is going into the gluconeogenesis pathway that's why less oxaloacetate will go into the TCA cycle therefore there will be less acetyl coenzyme A will go into the TCA cycle. So there will be buildup of acetyl coenzyme A in our body. So acetyl coenzyme A will go into the diverted pathway which is ketone body production. So acetyl coenzyme A will convert into acetoacetyl coenzyme A and after that it will convert into acetoacetate with the help of HMG coenzyme A synthase and acetoacetate will convert into the ketone bodies and that's how ketone bodies are generated in the fasting state. Next step of the DCA cycle is isocitrate. Isocitrate is an isomer of citrate which is converted into isocitrate with the help of aconitase enzyme which is a form of intermediate cis aconitate and it is inhibited by fluoroacetate which is a right poison. So the next step of the TCA cycle is alpha ketoglutarate. Alpha ketoglutarate is a first rate limiting step of the TCA cycle which is inhibited by ATP and NADH and activated by ADP and calcium. As you can see in the picture that isocitrate is converting into alpha ketoglutarate with the help of isocitrate dehydrogenase. In the process it will also produce a carbon dioxide mole molecule. So the next step of the TCA cycle is succinyl coenzyme A. Succinyl coenzyme A will convert from alpha ketoglutarate with the help of alpha ketoglutarate dehydrogenase complex enzyme which is similar to pyruvate dehydrogenase complex enzyme and which has same cofactor as pyruvate dehydrogenase like thiamine coenzyme A, NAD, FADH and lipoic acid that we have already talked about in pyruvate dehydrogenase video that I will link in the right side in the i button. So the next step is succinate. Succinate will convert from succinyl coenzyme A with the help of succinyl coenzyme A synthetase. In the process it will produce one GTP molecule. 
so the next step of the tj cycle is fumarate fumarate is converting from succinate with the help of succinate dehydrogenase enzyme as you can see in the picture that this enzyme is a very unique enzyme which is embedded into the mitochondrial membrane and it is function as complex 2 in electron transport that we are going to talk about in my future videos you have to remember that fumarate is also produced from several other pathways like urea cycle, purine synthesis, in purine synthesis especially formation of IMP, in amino acid breakdown like phenylalanine and the tyrosine. So the last step of the TCA cycle is malate and oxaloacetate. As you can see in the picture that fumarate is converting into the malate with the help of fumarase and H2O. Malate will convert into the oxaloacetate with the help of malate dehydrogenase enzyme and it will produce one NADH molecule. So now we have to know that what is malate shuttle. Malate shuttle is the transportation of the malate molecule from cytosol into the mitochondria and mitochondria to the cytosol. We have to remember that malate can cross mitochondrial membrane with a special transporter and NADH and oxaloacetate cannot cross the mitochondrial membrane. There is two key uses of this malate shuttle, transfer of the NADH into the mitochondria and transfer of the oxaloacetate out of the mitochondria. That we have to remember that there is only two key uses of the malate shuttle. So as you can see in the picture that here oxaloacetate is in the cytosol. We have to transport this oxaloacetate into the mitochondria. So oxaloacetate will convert first into the malate and that malate will go into the mitochondria with the help of the special transporter. Now the oxaloacetate is delivered into the mitochondria. Now we have to get it out. Oxaloacetate will convert into the aspartate and aspartate will convert go into the cytosol with the special transporter and that aspartate will convert back into the oxaloacetate and that's how oxaloacetate transport in and out of the mitochondria so you have to remember of the tca cycles intermediates which is citrate alpha ketoglutarate and oxaloacetate citrate is used in fatty acid synthesis alpha ketoglutarate used in amino acid synthesis and oxaloacetate used in glucose and amino acid synthesis so now we will talk a little bit about succinyl coenzyme a succinyl coenzyme a which not only comes from tca cycle it is comes from alpha ketoglutarate in tca cycle succinate in tca cycle and from methylmyelonin coenzyme a which is a old chain fatty acid and branch chain fatty acids and which is used in heme synthesis so you have to remember that it is come from three main sources and it is used in heme synthesis. So now you have to know that what will inhibit and what will stimulate this TCA cycle. So TCA cycle is inhibited by these molecules like ATP, NADH, acetyl coenzyme A, citrate and the succinyl coenzyme A. And it is activated by the ADP and calcium. And when what? step that we are going to see in the next slide as you can see in the picture that first pyruvate into the acetyl coenzyme A there is inhibition of the ATP and acetyl coenzyme A and NADH from acetyl coenzyme A into the citrate there is inhibition of ATP NADH succinyl coenzyme A and citrate and there is inhibition of the isocitrate to the alpha ketoglutarate from ATP and NADH and stimulation of this step from ADP and NAD+. Another step which is alpha ketoglutarate to succinyl coenzyme A that is inhibition of ATP, NADH and succinyl coenzyme A and that's how it is regulated. So thank you everyone for watching this video. If you like this video hit the like button, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends.